From the world of graphics design comes this concept known as the Gutenberg Diagram. And after I teach it to you today, you're going to realize why it's so important when uh, putting your resume together or any kind of flyers or visual material. Okay? It's named after the German printer, Gutenberg, who first published the Bible. Okay? Uh, he understood that the way that we read language, left to right, top to bottom, um, there are certain ways that you can do things with the page by putting icons or visual elements on the page that help pull the reader's eye to various places on the page so you can communicate certain bits of information. Okay? So I've got some examples that I want to walk you through and uh, I think you'll see why it's so important after I show it to you. Okay? So let's get started. Okay, so here we have an ordinary piece of text, right? Now, the Gutenberg diagram says that because you have page after page after page of just text, it can get really hard for the reader to take in the information. So in order to help the reader uh, pull out certain ideas or concepts that you think are important, you need to understand uh, where to place those particular uh, bits of information on the page and how to do it, okay? Um, so one of the first things you have to do is to understand that the page itself is divided up into four pieces, okay? And then next you have to see that because we read language from left to right and from top to bottom, there's a thing called reading gravity, which is indicated by this arrow. We start in the upper left-hand corner, we read all the way down, and we end in the lower right-hand corner, okay? That's reading gravity. So if you were actually place, um, say, numbers on the, these different corners of the page in order of hierarchy or importance, you would get this. You would get one, two, three, and then four, because of the way we read text, okay? And so because of that, the way your eye travels across a page, it looks like this. You start immediately at spot number one. If you were just skimming the page, and you would end up down here in number two, Okay, and then if you take that split second again to look at the whole page, you'll end up going to spot number three, and then perhaps maybe down to four. So in order of importance, you have one, two, three, and four, where the eye naturally travels on a piece of paper. You may be wondering, what in the world does this have to do with being an actor? Stay with me on this. Okay, so let's look at the uh, average actor's resume. I whipped this one up. This was an old resume of mine. This is my theater resume from some years back. Now, you can see it's laid out like the normal actor's resume, right? So do you see a problem with this resume? Well, let me, let me help you, okay? I've imposed the diagram on the resume. Now, as you can see, in the three most important spots on the resume, there's nothing there. There's nothing on the page to pull the reader's eye across it or to find some piece of information that says, read this, it's important. Okay? By putting my stuff in the center like this and then having nothing, no elements, other visual elements here, it makes it much harder for the reader to take in the information. They have to work harder. And when you look after, you know, hundreds of resumes in a day, it gets to be a little trying. So, what do you do to fix this? Well, you flip things around. You begin to utilize these three corners, okay? This is uh, for an audition I did for a theater uh, play set in like the mid-1800s, okay? So, uh, what I did was, the first thing, the most important information on the resume is my name and contact information. So that's in spot number one. Now, to help pull the, re the reader's eye across the page, I put a photograph of myself, in this case a photograph of me from a period piece. It was a movie I did, but it was from the, the right period. And so just by having that photograph, I immediately pull the reader's eye down to the corner, which means they're going to start taking in all this information too. And then in the split second after that, they'll pull back and look at the whole document again and see that there's a new box up here with my stats inside. Okay. Now, of course, the weakest corner already has my special skills in it, so I haven't really lost anything by playing around with this spot. So, once again, the reader's eye went one, two, three, and then down to four eventually. Now, here's an alternate to that same layout. Uh, this is what I would do if, say, I was uh, 
in a play, and I didn't have a photograph to use down here for something, and I was coming in for an audition. This is what I call a now playing box. Uh, here it says I'm playing Benedict and Much Ado About Nothing at the Shakespeare Theater. So once again, though, I've got my most important information here. And then I put this box, and of course to make it pop, I've added just a little bit of color to it. And then their eye goes back up to my stats, which are the three most important spots on the resume. So there you have it, the Gutenberg Diagram. And I'm telling you, once you understand this concept, you're going to start seeing it everywhere. In newspapers, in magazine layouts, everywhere. Because it works. So, take this concept, start playing around with your resume. Decide what pieces of information are most important and where to put them on the resume. But remember those four, those four corners, right? The, the upper left, the lower right, the upper right, the lower left. Um, put those pieces of information Use things like boxes or photographs or color to help pull the reader's eye to those spots so that they'll take in that piece of information all by itself. It works every single time. Thanks for stopping by.